So welcome back, everyone. Um, after yesterday, it's a nice start. So we're going to continue this lecture series. Thank you. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being back. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, see you, uh, all of you back. Uh, so um, the plan for today is um, to uh, see some more ideas uh, in this explanation of arguments, and we will apply to Kakea's problem. So let me start by um, recalling um, briefly what it was. So if we call, um, we're looking at the finest field Kakea problem. So uh, a subset of uh, a vector space over a finest field um, was. Okay, if for every direction, um, there exists uh, some line in that direction inside this. And um, we have approved uh, lower bound this view. So before, okay, just without writing, I just remind as a reminder, we got had a set uh, k we found a polynomial vanishing from the k and then we extrapolated well what we really should be thinking of point infinity but we are basically said that this polynomial must be a uh, restriction polynomial must be actually identical to zero on those lines and then we learn something about coefficients of that polynomial from that and got a contribution okay so this is like executive summary of the end of the last lecture so um in uh to improve on this um the um, there are uh, kind of two ideas which I want to start with. Um, one is um, in the uh, uh, the vanishing lemma at the very end, um, which uh, we uh, let me just recall it. We had a condition the polynomial had a um, degree at most q. So what we had, we had um, f um, was a polynomial. X, D, and F of B was zero for all B in F of the D, um, and degree of F was um, at most, um, at less than, strictly less than Q, so at most Q minus one, then, uh, conclusion with f was zero. This is, was the, the vanishing I mean, But normal vanishes too much, it's got to be zero. And this was a multivariate version of it. Um, the first uh, kind of um, ingredient uh, is upgrading this lemma a little bit. We'll upgrade it actually second time during uh, later in the lecture. But let's start uh, with a uh, small upgrade. We um, can weaken this condition here Instead of assuming the degree of polynomial f is um, um, small, we only need to assume it is small in each of the variables separate. So it's enough to assume that degree uh, with respect of each of the variables is less than. Okay. And the reason is, um, if you recall the proof, we were just doing induction. Uh, on the uh, on the uh, uh, where one variable at the time, so we were basically we were writing this as the c i c x prime x d to the i, and the point was that we wanted basically that this um, polynomials to be of degree at most the q uh, q minus one, so something we can apply induction to, and this whole thing would be of degree less than q. And this is, so in order to do that, this is all we need. So this is really what we actually, our proof showed, and this slide is stronger, is it? Okay, this is first ingredient. The main new ingredient um, is um, to, and it's uh, this is an idea which is used in many places, is to um, think about polynomials which not just vanish, but vanish to some high order. Um, this is, uh, so let's first of all, um, talk about what it means to vanish to a high order. 
Okay, so this is, um, okay, this will be slightly provisional definition because I will wiggle, provision, uh, modify it, but let's start. Um, so, um, uh, polynomial F um, vanishes to order at least M at the point B if if I take any if I take any uh, M directional derivatives I, I'm, I'm going to be zero at that so if um, I look at um, derivatives partial derivatives with respect to x to the alpha um, f f evaluate at that point b this is zero for all of uh, at most m where again we still be using multi-index notation for the partial derivative so this is dm dx alpha that means uh, I'm the uh, it's dx uh, um, x1 to alpha 1, dx2 to alpha 2. So I'm basically taking partial derivatives uh, in all, um, and the, how many times I take a partial derivative in the direction xi is given by, by my um, alpha. Yeah. So Maybe um, uh, there is a, an, so this is, this is a good, this is provisional, which you're going to basically, I mean, this is not, um, as we will see, it's um, not the best of the definitions. Here is a, a better definition, definition. Uh, it's a better definition, and this is what we will do. Um, and it's, uh, it's better to think of, um, the coefficients of f. Uh, so, so if you think about f at p plus x, so this is a polynomial in x. This polynomial uh, has no ter uh, terms of the form c x um, alpha with alpha less than x, right? So this is, I'm saying this, is, at first sight, it might look, I'm saying this definition and this definition say the same thing, right? Uh, saying that, you know, a derivative, in, um, say, uh, x derivative vanishes, it's the same thing as saying that uh, the, um, so saying that, <clears throat> saying that the, saying that it is a, a seven number derivatives uh, vanish, it's the same thing as saying that for several terms of polynomial vanish. This is better definition because this definition works only only for um, the order um, uh, is less than Q. The, the, uh, so this is going to be diff uh, so it works because problem is if you take it, uh, more than um, if you take uh, uh, more than Q derivatives, Q more derivatives, you're going to get zero polynomial all the time, right? So this is, this is so this is, uh, so our intuition is coming from usually um, Euclidean, uh, from uh, real numbers, which you know, wants to think about this way, and this is how we're going to think about things. But the definition we're going to be using is this definition. This is better definition because it works for, um, um, uh, even when uh, this parameter m is bigger than uh, q. Do you want to have equality there uh, uh, to match them? No, the I think it is fine. So if the vanishing to order one, uh, oops, this was typo. Ah, okay. Right, so vanishing to order one means you're vanishing. So <clears> this, right, the constant term is zero. Uh, vanishing to order one means linear terms are zero. And so forth. All right. 
Okay, so this is different. This is definition, which we are. Um, okay. So let's see. Um. Um, a first, you know, a quick way. Um, how to um improve on the um previous um uh, bound on, on the okay okay. So um. So um. Theorem. Um, so theorem will basically uh, uh, as follows. So if K is F is Gaia, then size of K is going to be at least uh, Q to the Z, basically. I mean, proof we will see if I give slightly better constant, but uh, let's just try it. <clears throat> okay. When we do this, um, we've seen this before, we are, um, we're going to find a polynomial which vanishes at k. So we want to find a polynomial that vanishes at k, but now a twist with to high order, to order m at it's m at each k. Okay, so let's write the conditions of what we need. So uh, the condition that um, F vanishes at P uh, to order M, at least M, um, means that the, um, well, uh, if I'm looking at the coefficients, of if I'm looking at the coefficients of um, x to the alpha in this polynomial, um, that they have got to be zero for all alpha that are small. Now, what about what are these coefficients? Well, um, we can just write them down. So, if, if my f, right, we try to find co uh, coefficients of f, is c. So f of my c alpha y to the alpha, my polynomial. Uh, then the coefficients uh, so the coefficients uh, Uh, is a linear combination of these uh, coefficiency alphas with various coefficients. So we want a bunch, bunch of binomial coefficients, or if you just expand everything using binomial here. But the point is, it's going to be linear in C alphas. So again, for each such um, uh, equation, we're getting a, uh, of this form, we're getting a linear equation for the C alphas. So there are, well, well, um, how many equations we get? Well, exactly as many as there are um, uh, indices alpha with less than m. So this is, there are going to be um, m plus um, D, choose uh, D, well, minus uh, one, if I uh, um, write, then the D, so let's maybe, I, well, I might be my one off, let's just check. D is um, one, uh, uh, right, I think that this, this is correct. Um, 
So there are that many uh, equations for each point times the number of points. Yeah, I'm a bit confused. Is this, is this alpha is different from beta, right? Yeah. Sorry? Do you have the same alpha? I mean, ah, sorry, I should, I should do this. Sorry. This is actually, yeah. this is, this is my, this is my equation. This one, so my, my, my polynomial, this is some polynomial of this form, right? And I hope, so well, actually in some sense, yeah, it's a different analysis, but they're both bound inside the quantifier. So it's, they're not clashing, but yes, better to use the same. So there are that many equations, linear equations. Size of the cube, you the size of the Oh, sorry, size of k. Linear equations are on this vector of the C alpha. Yeah. Oh, C beta? C, uh, <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so there are that many linear equations. So uh, we can find this polynomial as long as the number of as long as long as the number of um, unknowns exceeds the number of um, uh, linear equations. So if um, m plus minus one choose d times k uh, is smaller than uh, smaller than the um, the uh, length of this vector of c betas, right? We can find an non-zero polynomial. Okay, but I haven't told you how long is this thing is. You can find non a non-zero solution. Okay. So let's do that. So now I'm going to uh, tell you what, what my CB does are, what, what, what kind of polynomial I'm looking for. And I'm going to look for F in, uh, in not just polynomial of, of a bounded degree, but because uh, I'm going to want to use that upgraded lemma, I will want polynomial uh, whose um, degree in each coordinate is no more than time. So my f uh, uh, is going to look uh, at c beta um, y to the beta. And what I will want, I will want that degree in each coordinate is at most Q minus one, so so that I can use that lemma at the end of the day, and I will also want that the total degree of this whole polynomial is not large. I, and I will there will be some constant times Q. Uh, that's why it's a bit. All right. So, so this is so the, so this is some set, okay? So the uh, and uh, so the I I can choose, okay? So if my c uh, this constant c is d, which which will be the simplest choice, then the length of this um, vector is just um, Q uh, um, Q to the uh, uh, Q times D. Right. No, so Q, what did I say? Q to the D. Okay. Okay, but uh, all right. So the, this is the choices. Now I, So what's the meter of the proof? So I found my polynomial, it vanishes to height 
order, or again, assuming my like is this other side, I found polynomial vanish to high order on each uh, point of my KK set. Now I do the extrapolation. So, uh, so, so, um, let F um, be as above. Uh, then um, let's now um, take it, uh, take us um, a derivative of F. So consider um, the derivative of uh, F um, for alpha um, less um, um, than M minus. So some, I'm going to um, take a derivative with respect to some um, small order. So this, uh, since F um, vanishes to the order M at, at, at some point, it's, um, if, if, I take, if I take fewer than um, derivatives than order of vanishing, it's still going to vanish at that point. So uh, note that this polynomial uh, uh, still vanishes on K. All right. Um, so uh, if I restrict this to uh, to the to a line, so let um, uh, again uh, provide that before f is the sum of the homogeneous components. Where f i is genius. Of degree um, i. Now, the when I take derivatives of the individual components f of x uh, f i. Well, if I take uh, if I take alpha uh, al uh, alpha main derivatives of a polynomial of degree i, each time I take derivative degree goes down by one. It's going to be homogeneous. Or degree i minus the number of derivatives I took, uh, unless unless it's just zero, unless unless it might happen that if I take derivative, I'm just good. I'm going to get a zero. So unless um, this is uh, happens to match. Okay, um, so okay, so uh, now pick any B. Um, let a uh, the line. We start at the beginning point of the line. It's fine. You subset of K. So um, F, so this polynomial, um, X 
alpha f k plus b t. So I'm now restricting this polynomial to a line. And as we just discussed, this thing still vanishes if, if I did not take too many derivatives. So this still vanishes at all the points of F. Okay. Um, and furthermore, it vanishes um, not just once, I probably should say, um, it vanishes many times, so it vanishes on K, Right. If I take if I take alpha derivatives, um, I still have m minus two, uh, m minus alpha derivatives left. Right. So I'm vanishing to actually a reasonable order. Uh, uh, so it's, it's just not a zero, but this thing, and furthermore. F of A equals B. C vanishes to order at least M minus alpha at each. Okay, we're also taking a partial derivative. Yes, so I'm saying if each time I take a partial derivative, order of vanishing might go down by one. Right, so there it's, uh, you mean F or partial F? Ah, thank you. <laughs> um, thank you. Yes, partial, 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 partial. Partial F. So I'm vanishing a lot. Now, um, Let's now um, use the fact that my polynomial is not of too high degree. So now I have a single variable polynomial. It um, <clears throat> vanishes um, to high order at every point. So now the degree of this partial, degree x to the alpha, f. Um, this is uh, uh, at most, well, degree of f, uh, which is with t, sorry, uh, minus the order. So, uh, uh, and, in degree, and in particular, if I restrict it, so a line degree is not going to uh, go up, but it is I'm restricting to a line. It's going to be also, it's going to be small, at most this, which is at most. Okay. All right. So, and this is uh, at most um, that one. Uh, less. Okay, so we have, so our, our F vanishes at a high order. And let's me what's doing that. Now we can conclude we are vanishing. <coughs> so, if um, the total of order of monitoring, so if the um, if uh, m minus alpha uh, times q, so because we're vanishing at q points to the or this order, it's a single variable polynomial, so this is very familiar setting. If this uh, order total of uh, order of vanishing exceeds 
the degree of this polynomial, which is the um, um, uh, d uh, q minus uh, alpha, then we can conclude that f a uh, C, sure, I mean, uh, we will set to C, but that's fine. Yeah. Um, then um, this partial derivative is a zero point. And what is C? C was basically this parameter bounding the degree of the C, D. So, okay, this is a parameter we will have to, we can play later. I'm saying uh, we will later basically set it to basically D. I mean, uh, it, it's not going to be optimal choice, but it's going to be good enough for our theorem. So this is the bound on our degree of the polynomial. Um, so we are, so we are, but uh, vanishing, um, so F, the partial derivative of F vanishes on this line. Now, by the argument which we already know, this implies that, uh, that uh, the, uh, uh, I'm looking at the uh, coefficient of the uh, highest degree coefficient in in this, this is zero. This is going to be the uh, comes come from the uh, highest homogeneous component of F. So the um, this is just going to be the uh, uh, derivative of the highest homogeneous component of F. This is going to be zero. I mean, for that particular problem. At least the problem lying on the left hand side of the inequality was a factor Q there. Um, this one? Yes. Because uh, what we are using is the following it's a one variable factor. Let me just nip it. Write it out. What do I use? Okay. Maybe uh, let's write the proposition that if G is a single uh, variable polynomial, um, uh, um, that vanishes to order, say, uh, M, because this uh, uh, at, um, say, K points, then, and it's not, uh, then either it's zero or degree of G is at least K times M. So this is a uh, generalization of the, uh, so for K, for M equals one, it's saying, if I banish at K points and I'm not zero, well, I'll have to have degree K. If, uh, if this is generalization for high order banishing, and the proof is um, simple. If, so I'm banishing, so if you banish at some um, T zero to order M, that's the same thing as the t uh, minus t zero to the power m dividing your polynomial. And if you have, if I have uh, t points like that, then I'm going to be divisible by product of these uh, factors. So um, if I look at the product of t minus ti. To, uh, to property power to m 
is going to dig where T1, T, uh, K, and other points. So, So this is what uh, this is basically why I have Q here because I'm managing the Q points to this order. Okay, let's get back to um, where uh, where we start. So we have partial derivative of f. We are uh, we, we deduce that it vanishes on the on the whole line. To, uh, to reason of to high order, therefore it's actually a zero polynomial on single variable polynomial on that line. Then we're applying our um, you, uh, usual argument the, with uh, looking at the highest um, uh, degree uh, monomial, uh, which must necessarily come from the highest degree homogeneous component. And then we're using okay, uh, the same argument as last lecture to deduce that that actually means that these derivatives must uh, uh, better vanish. Okay, that's this is the um, the trigger. Okay, so this is the lemma it should not erase. Um, let's. All right. Um, okay. So um, to get uh, so we are going to so so we are going to ch uh, choose or not uh, alpha zero to start with. So we are going to uh, so what we are seeing is uh, this thing. <coughs> FD is B for all um, for all B. Now this polynomial is um, consists uh, has uh, no, consists of some of the terms of F. So um, the uh, degree in each of the variable of this is uh, well, of course, no more than the degree in each in that variable of the whole f, and that was less than it. because we chose our f to be of that specific shape. It doesn't have any terms uh, involving monomials of degree more than q. Any variable is not just power more than q. Now, by that, uh, by the vanishing lemma, that means that this polynomial is um, zero. Okay, and that would, that's a, uh, that's a contradiction. Assuming we all we can satisfy these conditions, which I I've written about. Right? We we there is that if here, which we need, which we need. Um, which need. Good. All right, so we need to, so, so our, uh, 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 so let's just check parameters. That's basically the only thing which remains. We see what parameters we are going to. Okay. So, um, so we are going to choose um, M to be, um, basically we needed to be tiny bit larger than uh, C. We needed to be, um, uh, I, think so. I think I got it right here. M is C, okay. M, we want this M to be um, 
um, basically say um, C plus one, um, either bit, a tiny bit larger, um, to make that hold with alpha zero. And then we also need um, to be able to construct this KK set. For this, we basically need to be able to solve this homogeneous uh, equation. So, so this equation. So, and we, uh, we uh, so this, so this shows, shows that um, this equation um, does not hold. So this is um, M plus, D so one choose D. Okay, so this got to be larger than that length. Um, that length is um, that length is we written it Q to the D. So Q to the um, so did I write it right? Sorry. Please let's check. So this is this was the number of coefficients. There were d of them. So q q d. And um yes m. So it's my I'm um, again I I I my choice of c. Was said it's flexible, but I, cho I, I'm cho I chose D for simplicity of this calculation. So this is C is D. So what I'm having, so my K is bigger than Q to the D divided by, by the binomial coefficient 2 D to D, which is approximately 4, four to the D. So which is, so this is um, bigger than uh, Q to the D, or to the D, because this is bounded by um, two to the power two. To the D. So this was basically proof. Okay, we chose with some parameters. So we chose first of all the sequels D parameter was again chosen. It's not optimal choice. You can tweak it by taking it smaller. Um, and if you actually count how many how many um, coefficients here. Uh, and it changes the right hand side. This is actually going to give you a better bound if you choose the C slightly smaller. And the second thing you can tweak is um, is applying it is not only to the alpha zero but a larger alpha. And again, we will um, discuss how that works. I think already after the break. And that. So if you just tweak this constant C, you go, you know, the optimal choice will give you approximately 2.6 to the D, okay, something. And um, by tweaking this al um, alpha, we will be able to get um, essentially two to the D here, okay? So let's just um, we'll do it after the break. Again, more donuts. <laughs> uh, I, I hope there are donuts left. Sorry, I, I didn't want to promise you that. So, I'm just I'm just mentally plotting the graph, you know, on Thursday. How many people on Thursday? Under thirty. Oh. <laughs> but you know, but you know, you know, we will start a new topic tomorrow. So even tomorrow, you know, it's too much I can do. Come rejoin. Everybody got the donuts? Okay, so we... All right. Okay, so um, we are going to see basically how to use the larger alpha, essentially. And, and for that, we will need um, to... Um, we will need to use... I think... I, uh, problem is, again, uh, High orders of vanishing is, as as before. High orders of vanishing, we need to worry about taking too many derivatives. We take more more derivatives, make our polynomial zero. 
it's actually not useful. So um, as a, uh, we so we are going to um, basically um, introduce um, again the version of the derivatives, which is um, I will just write here. Make the argument go. Okay, so this is so this is just a minor twist which we will need. Um, this is known as Hassan derivatives. So this is um. This is basically the same, has the same relation to normal derivatives as that better definition of vanishing uh, or, uh, to the naive definition of provisional definition of vanishing. So um, the so, uh, so let uh, F polynomial uh, Alpha um, is a multi index. Then um, uh, the Hassan derivative, which I will just denote it by uh, putting F of uh, um, to the alpha in, the, in, in parentheses at a point P is going to be just defined to be the coefficient of. Um, x to the alpha in, in this. So that's so the um, so f the right, it vanishes order m that's me. That means that all its class of derivatives are zero. Right. And uh, so the, the only difference between this uh, this extra, um, this definition and the usual part, uh, derivative is with factorials, right? So. Uh, if you if you remember Taylor's formula, right? The let's say single variable. That's uh, the uh, coefficient of x to the alpha is going to be the alpha's derivative uh, 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 times alpha factorial. So divide so divide by the alpha factorial. I'm sorry. So and it's this uh, this um, when alpha is components more than Q, this factorials is what actually is uh, making problem for us. So let's just basically write um, properties, basic properties of this, which is basically exactly analogous to the usual um, derivative, just the other factorials. So uh, it's linear, of course. Um, the uh, it preserves homogeneity. So if uh, F is homogeneous, of degree uh, D, uh, then F of alpha is homogeneous. Of degree uh, d minus alpha, unless, of course, unless it's zero, it might happen to just vanish. Um, and uh, finally, um, it's probably the only um, tiny bit non trivial statement it, it, it's a basic chain rule. So if um, uh, uh, well, so kind of uh, what I'm going to write is an really trivial case of chain rule. It's just a uh, derivative of a derivative is going to be the derivative. Basically. So there's going to be um, f 
alpha plus beta times some constant. Okay, what's the constant? Well, okay, it's going to be this where what the, okay, okay, what the hell this means because alpha and beta are the vectors. So this um, this means that's that's right. So this is basically collecting all those factorials together. Um, okay, so this uh, so the linearity is obvious. Homogeneity is obvious. Uh, the um, the only thing which is uh, why is a little bit of proof of is the last part. So let me let me write that. Um, so, um, so the, for the proof of the third property, I'm going to, um, consider, um, X plus one, um, X plus one, just make sure I will get my equation consistent with it. Yes. Okay. So let's look at the um, p plus y plus z, and I'm going to evaluate it in two different ways. On one hand, I can evaluate it as um, this much. So this is going to be by definition, it's the sum of f. Um, I'm I'm summing over. Um, let's just make sure I will right. Let me just finish. The this is going to be enough. yes. Um, uh, uh, P Y plus uh, Z plus. So this is my this is my uh. For some expanding around point B, then I will take this and I will uh, just uh, use binomial theorem to expand this. When I ex use the binomial theorem, right? This this is a vector, right? And I'm uh, and this is a multi-index. So I'm really I'm really raising each component to the appropriate parallel meters, right? So this is. Um, Right. Okay, by definition, this is just yi plus zi to the x power delta. Now, binomial theorem, Gives me the sum of this that. So we're going to get um, the sum over alpha uh, plus beta is this of y to the alpha z to the beta. All right. And so, uh, oh, and by now, coefficient of course. So, um, the, right, this is basically the product of all the binomial coefficients I get from expanding. And so this is uh, the same as uh, alpha, beta, alpha, plus beta, p, uh, y to the alpha plus z to the beta, alpha plus the beta, 
Okay. Okay, so let's just expand everything. And on the other hand, I can expand the other direction. So, um, also the F of P plus Y plus that. So this is I'm taking our der uh, derivative that's of one that, uh, well, at once I'll take it to two um, in terms. So this is going to be the sum. Okay, I like to make sure I match the indices. That's I should use alpha as an index here. Uh, Z equals to no beta. Z equals to the beta. So this is going to be equal to the f of beta. Um, p plus y z to the beta. Okay, this is my Taylor expansion. Then I'm going to expand this again. So this is going to be equal to the sum of beta of f. Uh, then I'm going to get the alpha of f beta. Um, so I think the alpha of e y to the alpha c to the beta. Okay, so that's just by applying a second expansion. And now we just can compare um, this expression here with this expression there, right? These are polynomials in uh, um, y and z. I mean, they're the same. I just wrote the same polynomial in two different ways. They must be the same. So um, the conclusion is that F beta alpha is got to be equal to alpha plus beta alpha. F of alpha plus beta. Again, um, so that's just basically, this is a bunch of, this is factorials which uh, account for the difference between normal derivatives and and the, the subsidiary. Okay, the reason we uh, we need this um, form of the um, chain rule um, is that it shows, so this is the only thing we're going to use, that if I, ta if I take some of the Hasse derivatives of something minus to high order, it still vanishes to high order. So if this is basically what we were using and we will need to use if f vanishes, um, to order m at um, at point b, then it's has a derivative. On interest order at least m minus alpha at the same one. And right through it, right, basically, which is basically saying if um right, we we just did that m alpha beta at the point p. And again, this is zero if alpha plus beta uh, has weight at most m. Right, and again, the, so if this is zero, this uh, right-hand side is zero, this term on the right side is zero, 
left side is zero. It might be zero more often if this, uh, if this thing happens to be uh, zero as well. Uh, but definitely, if this is zero, this is zero. Okay, so this is basically why uh, this is the property we need. So taking taking um, passive derivatives um, does not decrease the order of vanishing too much. So much like what we were saying here. And now we are ready to um, have one more ingredient. We are going to be ready to do the this high order vanishing once we upgraded vanishing time as well. So Three, this is two, so um, I hope the normal. It vanishes. Um. Uh, at each point. Um, to some order. And its degree, I think, uh, uh, let's say, is not too large. So, um, like no more than m uh, times q. So this is big. Um, then it got to be. So for m equals to one, this is our all vanishing lemma. And now this is this is an upgraded version where we actually say uh, we are increasing order of vanishing, but we also align higher degree polynomial. And this is um, this is uh, uh, I will leave it as an exercise, but prove it's proven exactly the same way as before. We inducting we indu going to induct on the number of variables. And the, um, the base case I think it, is that if you have a polynomial vanishing at Q points and, and, and it's, it's by some order M, it has to degree at least M times Q. This is that um, lemma I wrote uh, response to Hong's question. So basically it's the same thing, but using that lemma as uh, your main, uh, your base case and your main uh, driver. This is the same proof. So I wrote but again. So I will read the details as an axis. Okay. So let's now um, write out the proof of a better part. So theorem if K is K. Then K has size at least Q to the D, um, two to the minus one, Q to the D. So basically, uh, you should think of this as two to the D. So instead of a four, it's a two. And uh, in the light of the example, which I, I showed at the end of last lecture, this is basic optimal, except this exponent is D rather than D minus. Um, okay, so um, let me just get the parameter side for the notes because it will be easier for write them in advance. Right. Okay, so we, we, we're going to have some parameters, which is orders of vanishing, uh, M, order of vanishing, if we're going to look. Um, L, which is going to be um, uh, order of vanishing of a derivative uh, oh, 
derivative and they're going to be related It's the composition which is used for the um, for the uh, iteration. So we will want um, uh, we will want m to be bigger than l times one over q. Say m is let's say equals to one. Uh, rounded in some fashion you, which you like. This is what we will need. So this is the reports that we need to satisfy them to satisfy. Um, if uh, my uh, a uh, m plus d choose d um, is uh, I think it needs minus one. It's one. It's k. If um, this is smaller than l q plus d choose d. Then um, there exists uh, a polynomial F of degree at most L times Q um, such that uh, vanishes. To order to this M at each point of so this step is again the, uh, the same thing as before we're solving a system of homogeneous linear equations one uh, for each a point and for each of the uh, as the derivatives, we have a linear equation, and this is number of our unknowns, and we can solve uh, if the number of unknowns exceeds the number. Um, okay, um, then what? Um, then, um, um, again, let me say my f. It's the it's written like this. Um, D is the degree of F, so this is the highest non-zero um, uh, homogeneous uh, part. D. Um, uh, if I'm now going to look at the uh, derivative of f, and I'm interested at the, so it's going to vanish uh, at a plus, I mean, dt0 uh, to order at least uh, m minus alpha, or Okay, so again, so if, uh, again, I'm assuming the same thing. I have my line a plus b t uh, point, of, and I'm just now saying uh, now I'm using this uh, property, um, this property of the this corollary. So this is by this corollary. If my f vanished to order m and I took 
um, alpha many derivatives, I still vanish to the order at least m minus the, um, the beta power. So that goes Management. So um, my um, yeah. So um, if um, if the um, m minus alpha plus q. So this is this is. So we're vanishing to um, to this order at this many points. So if this total order of vanishing um, exceeds um, the, the uh, degree minus uh, alpha, then we can conclude that f of alpha a plus b t is zero. Okay, this condition um, follows from um, the condition we put on our parameters. Um, let me see where I have written so my choice of m right there from that star. So um, this follows. So if this if condition follows from this because if I write it out, this is and this if is implied by m times q needs to be bigger than well the degree here is no more than l times q, right? Because the degree of f is l times q. Uh, uh, this alpha move to the other side. I'm going to get q minus um, one times alpha, um, divide, uh, uh, divide everything by, uh, now this alpha um, is, I'm going to take no more than L, so derivatives, so this is my alpha will be no more than L, so B, so L, Alpha will be no more than L. So this will be followed follow from MQ um, bigger than 2L. Um, 2L. Uh, so LQ plus minus 1. L divided by Q, and I'm going to get exactly that condition star. So this is implied. By this, my choice of parameters, which I chose in advance. Okay, so um, this condition I have, so uh, my f, my, my, my Hassan derivative of f vanishes on this line entirely. It's a zero polynomial. So we can see it. Let's now look at the highest, um, highest um, uh, um, coefficient of t to the properties power in this. So, um, so we're going to look at the t to the power d minus alpha um, uh, here uh, in the alpha a plus bt 
um, this is going to be equal to um, the F D uh, alpha uh, of D. And this is, of course, zero. This is zero polynomial. Um, now, um, the important, now the next step is uh, is we can now conclude so now if um um, not so. so that means that F um, D uh, now this uh, F D vanishes at B to order order L because right we, this was for any alpha which is uh, of weight no more than L. So we're vanishing to uh, at B to order L uh, and this is true for every B. This was for arbitrary direction which we could do that. Now uh, we can now use our, our vanishing lemma. So degree of F of D, of course, is no more than uh, LQ, because no more than, than degree of F, which is no more than LQ. I should probably put strictly less. Um, and by the dilemma, which we have written um, over here, the f of d is got to be zero. And that, of course, contra contradicts the assumption of the normal is not zero, and this is the highest um, degree homogeneous term. OK, so what bound we are getting out of this? Well, what bound we are getting out of this, this works as long as we can that inequality on the um, on the size of k holds, so it does not hold. Um, so contradiction shows that uh, we have the size of k is going to be bigger than L q plus d choose d. This is m plus d minus one choose d. Now my uh, M is approximately L L Q. This is two um, two L. So it's L times L times two minus one over Q plus one. Uh, choose D, um, and then there's some kind of plus T minus one. Okay, this is kind of a mess. But the point is, um, as L goes to infinity, this mess becomes very nice because um, this is basically L to the Q to the power D divided by D factorial. And this is L times two over minus Q to the power D divided by D factorial. So this is, um, we'll just get um, L Q to the d divided by d factorial uh, divided by the l two one over q d divided by d factorial and that's basically q to the d divided by two one over q to the power d this is exactly the bound which i promised okay so we just take l to infinity and Right hand side tends to 
Okay, since this is an equality true for every choice of L, uh, we, we, um, we get our inequality that this is bigger than this limit. Okay, even though this limit is not an integer, okay, it's an inequality. Okay, um, so um, this was um, the method of multiplicities. So um, I want to say uh, before fi finishing this um, extrapolation uh, section, a couple of words on, on some on the other ideas which you uh, used to, you know, you say improve the bounds on the K and other problems, including joints, are uh, farther. And the idea is that in the when there's another inefficiency in the two inefficiencies in the proofs we saw. One inefficiency is then we, um, we are in this extrapolation step, we are um you we are only want that we vanish to some to high order on this line a plus bt right because we strict up on multivariate polynomial onto this line we want to we want to vanish to high order along the lines and where we deduce this condition is by uh, saying well this multivariate polynomial vanishes at that point to high order the restriction will vanish to the high order and it's more efficient to instead, um, uh, instead of asking to vanish at the high order of the point, you, you, you demand that only certain directional derivatives vanish to high order, okay? It's appropriately chosen, okay? So, you, uh, so that reduces the number of conditions that you need to impose, and therefore number of equations you need to solve, and therefore it gives you a better bound. A second um, uh, inefficiency comes in this um, vanishing lemma, which we already saw. So, right, um, much like you know, like pre we had our we had three vanishing lemmas. The first one with just um, uh, simplest one, polynomial degree at most skew. Second one where um, the the degree in each variable was at most skew, and this is the third one, high order. Uh, high order, uh, but most degree two. So what you can actually mix and match. You can have basically vanishing lemma, which is basically um, uh, talks about high order, but uh, treats variables separately. And uh, so that's that's what that's a third a second improvement. And the third improvement which you can do for this kind of things, at least for Kakea specifically, is um um, when you talk about applying this lemma not to arbitrary polynomial, we're applying it to homogeneous polynomial. And homogeneous polynomials in D variables are essentially uh, uh, regular polynomials in one fewer variable because what you can do, you can just scale the last variable to one, for example, just, uh, and so you basically just, you just, so, and uh, that means you actually have Instead of d, d minus one variables, which are really uh, matters, so you can have, have a vanishing lemma for that. And that's basically, if you put all of these ideas together, for example, it can improve, um, improve the bound of the k to, uh, to an optimal one, which is basically sort of the exponent d to, uh, to the power two minus one over q is d minus one. And also a similar, um, this kind of ideas also can be used in joints and the other problems of the similar flavor. Okay, and again, there are also you know, other kind of problems where extrapolation is used. Uh, for example, actually, the idea came actually to us from number theory, uh, Stepanov's method. But again, this would be just I don't um, too much, too far. And instead, we are going to do something completely different. And um, tomorrow, we are going to talk about algebraic constructions for extremal problems um, uh, for a couple of lectures, and then yeah. Uh, we need time for a meeting. We'll talk about slides. So this is the fun. Uh, thank you for coming. I hope to see all of you uh, tomorrow and bring your friends.